Welcome to the Light, Illumination, and the Law of Change from the Sanctuary of Self, Rosicrucian Order, Library, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom. The ancient mystical order Rosicrucius, also known as the Rosicrucian Order, AMORC, is a worldwide cultural, educational, and philosophical organization that is perpetuating the profound and practical teachings of the Rosicrucians. These teachings, as passed down and added to over the centuries, from ancient Egypt to Europe and now all over the world pertain to the mysteries of the universe, nature, and humans themselves. The Rosicrucian Library is a source of spiritual wisdom and insight that includes the important writings by the respected imperators of the order such as Dr. Harvey Spencer Lewis, Ralph M. Lewis, and Christian Bernard. Let us now continue with the reading of the next chapter 7 in the Sanctuary of Self by Fraser Ralph M. Lewis entitled Death, the Law of Change. We will learn about the Rosicrucian Order's view and explanation on death and its essence. Death, the Law of Change The ancient philosopher Epicurus stated, why should man concern himself so much about death and fear it? For by so doing he presumes to know the nature of death or the circumstances which surround the transition from life to death. Since man does not know these things, he should not dread death, not live in fear of it. He should not attempt to anticipate the unknown. When the end, the unknown, comes to us, it is then the known, and the thing that is known is never feared. Why do most men fear death? Is it not because they dislike to relinquish the pleasures, the joys, the rewards, the power, fame, and position they have attained in life? But if they fear to relinquish these things, if they fear that death will rob them of these pleasures, they must also realize that death will deny them pain, deny them worry, grief and strife. For if death checks one experience in life, it will check all of them. Let us consider death as being like the act of crossing the threshold into another room. When the chamber that we are in becomes crowded and no longer is able to serve our purposes and the door is flung open, and we see through the portal the room for further expression. Why should we hesitate to avail ourselves of it, especially when it affords an opportunity which the crowded chamber of the present may not? The soul of man is of the one universal soul, the intelligence of God, which flows as a spiritual efficacy through all men alike. We may again use an analogy which we have often used the soul force is like an electric current which flows through a circuit of electric lamps. It causes each lamp in the circuit to manifest light and color, each differently perhaps, yet the essence of all the lamps, the current, is the same. This soul force within man has, or shall we say, engenders certain attributes. The principal one is known as a psychic body. This cosmic intelligence or soul force is not confined to one area, section or organ of the body, as many philosophers once thought. Rather, it permeates each cell of the matrix of cells of which the human organism is composed. Each cell has its duties, its functions, which contribute to the whole purpose for which the human body exists. Therefore, as the cells in their protoplasmic substance compose the physical form, for example, of the heart, the psychic consciousness of those same cells comprises a psychic body or that which corresponds to the physical form of the heart, namely a psychic heart. At death or that transition which separates the body and the spiritual qualities or soul forces of man, what happens then to the psychic body? 
The soul, of course, is drawn into the universal soul from which it was never detached. For analogy, we ask the question, what happens to the electric current? When you turn off a light or switch off an electric fan, the current still exists, ready to manifest again when the material connection has been provided. The psychic body or self of a human is only absorbed into the universal soul. It is not lost. Rather, it harmonizes with all of the personalities and the psychic bodies that go to make the one cosmic soul. Again, we ask a question to further our point. What happens to the colors red, green and blue when there is no medium, such as a prism, to diffuse white light? The wavelengths of those colors are all blended together to make that harmony of all the colors of which white light consists. So it is with the psychic bodies and personalities in the universal soul. Just prior to the last breath, on the occasion of transition, the psychic body projects itself, that is, it seems to extend a few feet from the physical body. It is not liberated, it still is bound to the physical body by the silver cord, a traditional mystical term for that essence of the psychic body which remains attached to the living physical body. The greatest essence of the psychic body at such a time can be sensed, or rather, I should say, perceived as a cloud or haze. Sometimes it is in the form of an oval from an end of which there is seen to descend the silver cord as a kind of spiral or vapor. The smallest end of the spiral appears to enter the body at the solar plexus. With transition, therefore, there ends on this plane the consciousness of self and awareness of any irritation. From the Rosicrucian concept, cremation is the ideal manner in which to dispose of the body. The physical element of which the body is composed, in and by themselves, no more constitute man than does a wax figure. It is our duty, therefore, to aid them to return to their original state as soon as possible, and cremation does this. The long preservation of the body by elaborate embalming methods is a custom born out of a sentiment which continues to associate the personality and the self with the physical shell, or else it is the result of certain religious interpretations. It is only those intangible elements, those conditions and characteristics which compose the ego and the personality which make the you when they have gone. It is best that the physical elements of the body be freed as quickly as possible and with the utmost decency. Honorable viewers, it was a pleasure to have your company for today's words of wisdom.